Hello, greetings from Spirit of Health. This is Vaughn and... Jen. Yes, my lovely wife, <laughs> my inspiration, the passion behind what we do related to health and nutrition, especially related to women and children and natural childbirth. Oh, and that that's is the, sweet. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> and that's the topic for this video is we want to talk about natural childbirth. And so I just want to ask my wife a few questions because we've done a couple home births and I want to share her experience and hopefully give you some wisdom and maybe some encouragement to uh, do your own uh, natural childbirth if you haven't. So the first question is, why did you choose a natural childbirth, home childbirth? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. So um, I chose natural home birth, believe it or not, because my mother had natural home birth. Yep. And so hopefully, I am starting to pass this on again to my children, and I believe that that's actually something that's been lost in our generational line here in the last hundred years. Everyone had children at home. That's just what people did. Um, but in the last 50 years, mm -hmm. would you say, we've yeah, seen a, a, a drastic change. <clears throat> um, but fortunately, my, my mother, really believed in natural childbirth. She believed that she was designed to give birth and she didn't think of it as a dangerous situation. I was born in Hawaii uh, in a small little town called Hilo. On the beach? No, I'm just kidding. In a little sugar cane shack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For real, that was, that was for real. Um, no, my mom really believed in, in natural home birth and so I actually was born at home myself and then when I was three, she gave birth to my younger brother at home. And that was my first memory when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. I remembered being with my older brother and we were playing in the living room and I heard that baby Mark was coming and mm -hmm. it just was really exciting and it just seemed natural. And so in my mind, I always wanted to do the same thing as my mom. And as I got older, I started talking to women about birth and found out that, boy, I don't know anyone else who was born at home but me. And so it's just really interesting that my mom was a little pioneer back then, uh, holding out for home births. And um, in the midst of her generation, that was turning towards the hospitals. So, so could you maybe describe I know you've never had a hospital birth, but can you maybe describe your experience <clears throat> with a home birth, maybe versus you know some of kind of what you've heard happens in hospitals? Yeah. So when it came time to decide where you know we were going to have our our um, the birth of our child, our first child, Vaughn and I, of course, had lengthy conversations about this, and um, not only did I have the experience. Um, of seeing my mother. I didn't actually see the birth, but I was there in, in the environment and the energy, and I just remembered it being such a positive experience. Um, and then I had a lot of experiences talking with moms who shared with me their unfortunate stories that they had been hoping to have a natural birth, they ended up at the hospital, and it was like the domino effect one thing happened, then the next thing happened, then the next thing happened, and, mm -hmm. and, and all the fear and the tears. I, I actually probably cannot count how many women I've sat with and they've recounted their birth story for me with tears in their eyes, with pain in their heart and frustration that they felt that something was honestly taken from them. Mm -hmm. And that, that to me, was not something that I, I felt was right, and I wanted to do everything possible on my end to not have to walk through that for myself and for my baby and my husband. Yeah. Amen. So what type of birth did you have at home? So we had, um, we had a, a two home births, and we both had them in water. We were really excited to experience that. And um, the difference that I would say between a home birth and a hospital birth is, well, for one, you're at home. <laughs> you're <laughs> completely at your own discretion of 
where you want to be, what room you want to be in. Do you want to walk around? Do you want to lay down? Do you want to stand on your head? I mean, <laughs> you can do it all. Um, whatever is comfortable for you, whatever your body is telling you, you really get to choose. And you also have the comfort of your own shower. You have the comfort of whatever clothing that you decide you want. You know, something's not working. Let's change it out. Um, you have the option to eat. You have the option of your own food in mm -hmm. your own refrigerator. Um, so there's just a lot of kind of benefits to being at home. Yeah. Um, along with the fact that it's your own environment that you're comfortable with. You know, you can play your own music and you're really in control of who comes in your door. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the cool part. Where at the hospital, you might have requested a certain doctor well, maybe he's not on call or he's out of town that week or you're, gonna, you're getting a new nurse every shift change. So there's a lot of dynamics in the hospital setting that you're really not in kind of control in. Right. And, um, and so, so that, that was a, a big difference and that's, that's what, one thing that I just wanted to put a plug in for. Humbers. Now let me ask a question that I know every woman wants to know. How would you experience the actual birth itself? Because we did no, no drugs. And most women who go to the hospital, they get medicated. And I think there's a lot of fear with a lot of women on the actual birth experience. So kind of what did you learn about your body and you know, what described the experience as far as what you felt doing it without medication? Yeah, so <laughs> of course, there is a lot of fear about pain, and I, I had it too, and I, I believe that um, what, what helped me work through that was the, the, really the learning and the education that I took time to, to do by understanding why the woman's body is experiencing different things. And if you understand why your body's doing things in a certain way, it helps to bring kind of an awareness and a certainty that something's not going wrong and that this is unto something beautiful. Mm, amen. And so we took some, uh, we did like the Bradley mm -hmm. classes and then I also read some books and one of my favorite books that I've recommended to any mom who wants to do a natural childbirth mm -hmm is uh, Ina May uh, Gaskins. She does a, uh, she has a really good book on um, natural childbirth, her guide to natural childbirth. Mm -hmm. And it really goes through this, the, the stages and talks about what hormones are involved and how those hormones play a role in getting the body ready to open up. And so what I felt was more than anything, what helped me work through the discomforts was talking myself through and having Vaughn there with me and my birth team talking me through, reminding me of what's happening, reminding me of where we're going. And then really, by the time it gets to the point where the pain is, is, is a, what I would consider unbearable, <laughs> you're pretty much there. You're pretty much at that point where the baby is going to come out. <laughs> So, you know, I don't know how, how else to say it, but it's at the, it's like if you've ever been a runner, um, I'm going to, I ran marathons and mm -hmm. did triathlons, and there's a point where you feel like you cannot go anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but really, the, the finish line is just around the corner. And would you give up and be like, you know, all that training, mm -hmm. all that running, man, I just ran my, my keister off for mm -hmm. the last two hours, three hours, four hours. If you've done a marathon, it's more like four and a half, five. You wouldn't quit, you know? You wouldn't quit. And, and that's where I feel like the Lord sovereignly comes in. Mm -hmm. And it, in, in both of my births, mm -hmm. I feel like that's what happened. I got to the point where I could only go so far and then that wall comes down on you and you're like, it's not going to work. <laughs> My body will not do this. And the Lord says, yes, it is. And that's what makes it supernatural. That's how I designed you. Yeah. 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 And it happens. Mm -hmm. And yes, there is pain involved. 
but the the pain is short li short lived, and it's not it's not to the point that it feels unbearable like you're going to die. Yeah, there's a scripture about that. <laughs> I mean, yes, women might describe it that way. <laughs> I probably have too. But you make it through, and I've done it twice. So obviously, the first time wasn't <laughs> so bad. Mm -hmm. But and, and I want to do it again. You know, we're we're excited. We we want to have. We're not enough. pregnant yet. Yeah, <laughs> we're not pregnant. No, not pregnant. <laughs> Soon though, maybe. So, um, yeah. Hope that answers the question there. Yeah. So let me ask you another question because we know a lot of hospital births end in C sections, and the uh, rates of C sections with home birth is almost nil. And I think a lot of, there's a lot of um, misconception that C-sections are normal or that a lot of women have to get C-sections. Mm -hmm. um, so why is that not happening with home births yet it's happening so much in the hospital? Yeah, so that's, that's a really good question. And that's actually probably the motivating factor of, at the end of the day, why I chose a home birth. You know, in the beginning of our journey of learning about birth and home births versus hospital births, I, in my heart, I wanted to have a home birth because it just sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> then I did the research and I started realizing that at the end of the day, it was actually safer to be at home. Amen. And all of a sudden, my mind and my heart were saying the same thing and it was a done deal for me. So when you look at the, the, the rates of cesarean, it's like 20% sometimes, if so, not yeah, more. Depending on the hospital, 20 and, and as much as 40% in some hospitals. Yeah, and then home births, we're looking at like under 3%. So it's 2 to 3%, yeah. It's, it's crazy. Rare. It's staggering. So one thing that um, I learned through mainly Ina May's book that I really enjoyed, um, she talks a lot about the hormonal um, symphony that's happening behind the scenes and talks about oxy, you know, tocin mm -hmm. and, and how that's triggering the, the contractions and the body to produce the baby and, and really you know, get the, the, um, the baby down into the, the birth canal. And then there's the competing hormones that would go against that, which would be more like the adrenaline and um, mm -hmm. things that are associated more with like fear and right. anxiety. And so what happens a lot of times is you might be finding that you're, you're progressing well at home and you're ready to get you know, into the car and you're gonna go to the hospital and your heart might start racing and it's like, oh, the baby's coming. And you get to the hospital and all of a sudden, things aren't going the way they were. And, and what, what has been described to, in, in the books that I've read and, and the different um, people that I've, I've talked to that understand this hormone chemistry a lot better than I do, is that the, the, en the, the endorphins, the, the kind of adrenaline rush that occurred between that transition time, all of a sudden kind of stalled that labor. And the body has to work itself back up. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, now you're in a setting mm -hmm. that is different than your home you're surrounded by people you don't know, <laughs> and you've got to make this body open up. And you're on their clock. And you're on their clock. So there's a lot of things working against you at this point, and you've got to get that baby going. And so, unfortunately, it's a process you don't really have voluntary control over. It's kind of like that subconsciousness that you, it's, it's the autonomic system that we cannot necessarily press the button and say, okay, go, go, go do it now. It, it has to happen through the relaxation of the body. It has to happen through the, through the, the hormonal symphony it has to kick into gear. And if you've ever watched an animal in nature, how many of you think that that, you know, that animal's gonna have that baby when it's threatened or it feels mm -hmm. insecure? It's just not gonna happen. And the same thing happens with women in the hospital, especially when they're getting tossed around through different tests and treatments and laid on their backs and put in positions that aren't comfortable. and Drugs to induce labor. Yeah, and meant to go, you know, with, have a monitor on them that they can only move this much with, because we've got to read the baby's heartbeat. And, you know, and, and I understand that there's time for a hospital birth, and I understand that there is emergencies, and, and that's great, but 
to choose that as your primary place of, mm -hmm. of birth, to me, it's actually taking a risk, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And it's interesting because when we did all the research, because you have that fear at home birth, nobody else is doing it, everybody thinks you're crazy, and oh my gosh, what if this, what if this, what, all the fear, you know? Yeah. And when we did the research, our fear shifted. Yeah. And we were frightened beyond all get out to, to land in the hospital. To have anything to do with the hospital. Yeah. So what That's the last place we want to be. Exactly. So what happens, I guess, to answer your question is you get into the hospital setting, things start slowing down because of the competing hormones of the adrenaline rush with the oxytocin, and all of a sudden you're getting faced with the induction to start things ramping up again. The induction is with synthetic Pitocin that is basically mm -hmm. off the charts, cranking on your uterus, and you are in pain, and you want drugs, and then those drugs slow you down a little bit more, and yep. now you're in this little wobbly place, and then they tell you, guess what? You're you're not you're you're not doing it. You're you're not you failed, and and that's that's really mm -hmm. disastrous. The the those words like you your body didn't do it well enough so now we have to do a cesarean we have to do a c-section gosh that's just that's just heartbreaking and, and i i my heart goes out to every woman that's had those words spoken over them mm -hmm. that they they didn't they weren't producing their baby well enough and it really to be honest in my opinion it wasn't the woman's body that failed it was the system that failed Amen. it was the system Amen. so like Jen said, you know, there's a time and a place for hospitals. Um, we value them for the ability to save lives. Um, you know, in our home births, we had a backup plan. You know, if something was to go drastically wrong, we had a place and a doctor that we would we would go to. And so we want to be wise, but we also, I think, um, can be wise in choosing God's natural way to begin with, which is the way it's always been throughout history. Um, so unless you have any other thoughts, thank you um, for watching this video. We hope it's helped you, uh, encouraged you, inspired you. Um, my wife's great at just speaking uh, from the heart. And so um, we just hope that this encourages you to have children at home. Yeah, it's just really, I, I think my heart in doing this is to open your, your you know, you, you may come from a, a family line that everyone has had babies in the hospital, everyone's done epidurals, and you may be feeling like you, you need to just go right in line with, with all of that. And I just wanted to, to hopefully get the information out there that there is another way, yeah. and, that, and that it was actually the way it's been done for thousands mm -hmm. of years. Yes. And so um, humanity has, has done done well <laughs> yes. in that mode We're all here. <laughs> yeah. and so um, you know and, and then really I think the kind of the takeaway from my heart is it really puts a home birth a natural home birth puts you in the driver's seat of connecting with the Lord it connects you spiritually with the one who created you Amen. as he brings forth a new life through your body and, and so what better place to do that than the privacy of your own home? And speaking of connection, how about the baby connection? Oh, I mean, yeah. you go to a hospital, sometimes they, need to, they want to take the baby away and check all its vitals and do all this stuff. Those first few seconds or minutes are, of life are so crucial, that mom-baby bond, mm -hmm. to have that baby born and put right on your chest and immediately have the baby do the breast crawl to yeah. figure out how to nurse. And I mean, that is like, that's the yeah. essence and the power of how God created us, and we've yeah. lost it. Yeah. We've lost it. But you don't have to. You can, you can get it back. Um, you can choose you know, to do it um, the way God intended from the beginning. So. Yeah, and, uh, and honestly, the uh, one little thing, I know we keep adding things on. <laughs> it's so hard to stop. Um, people might have in their minds, like, I can't imagine having a baby born in my room. You know, it just sounds messy maybe or something. Mm. But it couldn't be further from the truth. Oh my gosh, I know. What a blessing. Our birth team, both times, we've had just amazing birth teams. Yes. Um, we love our local midwives. So we just want to give a shout out to Debbie Perry and Cheryl Gilman, amazing midwives here in the local Kansas yes. City area. Amazing women of God. And I'm sure there's others here in Kansas City and, and hopefully in your area as well. 
and I just was blessed by mm -hmm. the service that they gave us. It was an amazing experience. They came in and just handled everything from the cleanup to the laundry, uh, even took the time to make us some food and, yes. and really just I cherish the experience and I yeah. do it again in a heartbeat. Amen. So we encourage you and we hope this has been inspirational and given you some uh, wisdom, hopefully related to having a natural childbirth. And we just ask that you would pray about it and you'd talk to the Lord about it. You'd do your own research. You'd talk to midwives. You'd research what happens in hospitals and research the, the efficacy and the history of home births and really make that decision together as a couple because ultimately you know, we want to do what's best for our children. And just because it's been done a certain way throughout you know, the last three, four generations doesn't mean it's right. We're certainly starting to realize that. The closer mm -hmm. and closer we get to God, the more and more we realize that <laughs> we've done a lot of things wrong. And, you know, that's, o that's okay. Um, God is gracious and He's patient. And uh, I think we're, we're kind of getting back um, on the right track with a lot of things. And we think that this issue with natural childbirth is, is one of them. We, we feel like it's a powerful um, experience that, that you can have together as a couple. Amen. So, so thanks for watching and God bless you.